Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the null hypothesis. So in the counseling field, specifically in counseling research, the null hypothesis usually states that there is no difference between two groups. And one of the most common examples of how the null hypothesis is applied is in relation to treatment and control groups. So imagine in a counseling setting that you have a treatment that you would like to test and you would like to see that it's more, if it's more effective than doing nothing uh, or compare it to another treatment, see if it's more effective than another treatment. Maybe a treatment that's commonly used in an agency which we refer to as treatment as usual. So the two groups in that scenario would be the treatment group and the control group. And the null hypothesis would state there's no difference between the groups. So in effect, it would state that the treatment is not effective. It's not working any better than doing nothing. You could also think of the null hypothesis as, depending on the situation, as stating that there's no relationship between two variables. And specifically, when you're speaking about treatments, uh, comparing treatments to one another or tr uh, treatment to a control group, the null hypothesis states the treatment did not cause the change or is not associated with a change in participants' symptoms. The null hypothesis is denoted by H0. So whenever you have a null hypothesis, you have an alternative hypothesis. And in counseling research, it usually states there is a difference between two groups. There is a relationship between two variables. The treatment did cause or is associated with a change. And the alternative hypothesis also states that the null hypothesis is false. The alternative hypothesis is denoted by H1 or HA. So knowing that we have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, how do we test? Well, to understand that, we have to start with the concept of a p-value. So inferential statistics, for example, a t-test, produce a p-value. It is a number uh, that is a result of conducting an inferential statistic. And the p-value represents the probability that the result of the statistic was due to random error alone, assuming the null hypothesis was true. So for example, if a particular statistic produces a p-value of 0 0.02, then there's a 2% probability that the result was due to random error. Again, assuming the null hypothesis was true. Now, significance level is something different. The terms p-value and significance level are often used interchangeably in counseling research but they do not mean the same thing. The p-value is produced by the statistic. The significance level is set by the researcher. A common significance level in our field, in counseling, is 5% or 0 0.05. We also denote the significance level by alpha. So in this case, alpha equals 0 0.05 or 5%. So then in terms of whether we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it, we have to consider the p-value that's produced by the statistic. If the p-value is less than 5%, then the null hypothesis is rejected. And the alternative hypothesis, which states there is a difference, would be accepted. If the p-value is greater than or equal to 5%, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Or, as is sometimes stated, 
we accept the null hypothesis and therefore reject the alternative hypothesis. So if the p-value is greater than or equal to 0 0.05, we would assume there is no difference between the two groups. So taking a look at possible outcomes from conducting statistics, we have to consider two separate constructs. The first is the result of our analysis. And the second is reality. When we're testing hypotheses, we don't really ever know what the reality is. We know the probability that the result we received happened through random error alone, but we never know with absolute certainty what the reality is. So let's consider the various possibilities that we have in this table. So say for the result, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So for example, the p-value is greater to or equal to 0 0.05. And let's say that the reality is that the null hypothesis is true. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis, or accept the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is true. So you can see the intersection there in this table indicates correct. So we failed to reject the null hypothesis, and it was true. So that's a correct outcome. So if, if we stay on the fail to reject the null hypothesis row, and we move over a column to the null hypothesis is false, that's referred to as a type 2 error. That's when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, or we accept the null hypothesis, but in fact it was false. That's a type 2 error, also known as a beta error. Failing to reject the null hypothesis when in fact it was false. If we move down a row to reject the null hypothesis, or accept the alternative hypothesis. And we look at the first column where the null hypothesis is true. That's a type 1 error. So we reject the null hypothesis, but in fact it is true. That's a type 1 error, also known as an alpha error. The risk of making this error, or having this error occur, is equivalent to alpha. So if our alpha is set at 0 0.05, there's a 5% chance that a type 1 error will occur. There's a 5% chance that we'll reject the null hypothesis when in fact it was true. And then looking at the last possible outcome, we reject the null hypothesis and in fact it was false. In that case, we're correct. We rejected the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis was false. Now, in counseling research, oftentimes this is the result that we would like to happen. We would like the, the result of rejecting the null hypothesis and the reality that the null hypothesis is in fact false. So using the treatment uh, group compared to the control group example, this would be an instance where uh, the result would indicate that the treatment uh, was more effective than the control group, and that in fact was the reality, that in reality the treatment was more effective than doing nothing. And remember to keep in mind, in terms of hypothesis testing, that we never know what the reality is. We only have the probability that a result was due to random error alone, assuming the null hypothesis is true. I hope you found this video on testing the null hypothesis to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.